So, this is bad, and that ain't no exaggeration. We knew there was a childhood friend who taught this guy Russian. We knew that. Um, a lot of anime would go the route that either A, that person gets brought back into the cast at some point, causes a bit of a ruckus, because, you know, current Russian wannabe girlfriend, you know, it's, it's a bit of a love triangle in that. You know, long lost love, a new love, which one does he pick? Unless he's going to pull a Mashoku Tensei and become a dual wielder, I mean, someone's heart's going to get broke. And technically, that does happen, but it's worse than this. Now, sometimes they like to go the route that the person that they're in love with from the past is also the person they may be falling in love with in the present. Seemed unlikely that was going to be the case with Ola, but, um... Her sister. Her sister seems sweet as hell, man. Immediately when she starts realizing who it is, she's like, she pulls away because she doesn't want to hurt her sister. But, uh, yeah, that's 100% our boy. Like, it's just she knew him by a different name back in the day. And unless you're a blind man, hell, I'm pretty sure a, bl I'm pretty sure a blind man would be able to see this. Both our MC and the sister both had the nostalgia feeling this ain't just some simple oh it reminds me no it's 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 true and it's pain but what a good freaking episode full live reactions over on patreon if you want to see my full link of thought to any of these episodes gonna be over there exclusively so um first thing i want to say and i thought it was gonna be my main talking point before the whole reveal with the sister is that this show doesn't have a traditional formula when you look at episode one it kind of functioned in a way, it's like, okay, you're, pro at least for me, I'm walking in thinking, okay, it's going to be a pretty typical school series with this twist that the girl speaks Russian. But the feel of it, the formula of it, it wasn't the stiff, boring show. It kind of had a bit of, it had a fun little spice, nothing too crazy, but it was different. Episode two, Truck Coon came in and decided to drop the, it, I, it was like a parody. It was a parody, it was a comedy, it was just peak fun. And I think it's the best out of the three episodes. But episode 3 is a very close second um, to best episode because it functions super serious with everything that we get with the flashback and how the love started building, right? It's two sisters talking about how did you fall in love with this guy, right? And then the second half comes in with that twist. And it's just like, the show is actually unpredictable. Even if you could say, oh, I expected the, the old Russian girlfriend was going to pop back up. Hell, even if you thought she had a sibling and it might be that dy dynamic, it's like the way they structure these episodes, it doesn't follow a formula. Like, for a, a long time, school anime used to be very easy to predict. Almost every school anime started off with the soccer petals falling off the trees. There's always going to be a beach episode by episode 6, 7, or 8. You know, like, there's always a, a school event, like a fair of some sort, right? But it's the fact that this show is just so unexpected. And when you take a look at what the poster image for the show is, like, I'll, I'll show it. When I saw this on live chart, it looked like the most generic freaking school show I've ever seen. The poster is garbage. <laughs> I'm going to be blunt with this because it just looks predictable, cliche bullshit. Yet this show is actually one of the better produced ones in terms of both structuring of its narrative, but also just how actually different and unique this show feels. It's so different than anything you're probably expecting, and the fact that you are legitimately building this very cute dynamic between two people, one of which who once in a while says some cute shit in Russian, but in general they actually do talk with each other. It's just she's the type of person that after she clearly has stronger feelings, she gets a little, she tries to push back a little, she tries to make it be like, no, I'm not actually interested. Some people aren't good with receiving or giving compliments, and, you know, she's the type of person like that. And I like the fact that from the flashback, I actually appreciate that we have our MC who's actually, like, that moment after they exchange, like, hey, you can have, like, you can call me this name. It'll be an exclusive for me. Three other boys come in, we want to have a dance, and he's like, sorry, boys, she's taken. It's just like, there's this boldness, there's this confidence to it. And then they sideswipe you with the sister shit, man. Honestly, at some point, these two are going to have to have a conversation. They're going to have to realize. I mean, they both... For her, I'm pretty sure she's 100% sure. For him, he's confused because it's this nostalgic feeling of comfort that he once had. Minus the T going down his backside. Um, So the idea that at some point, something's going to slip up. And I would actually believe it if the slip up happens between them sooner than the slip up happens with Allah and her realizing that he can also speak Russian. At some point, 
the cats are going to be out of the bag and it's someone's heart's not going to be received well right at the end of the day i doubt this man's going to try to dual wield sisters i don't get the impression it's that kind of anime welcome to be proven wrong but uh most likely uh enough time has passed new current feelings that's what's gonna happen but only time can tell but uh this show is a surprise it really is it's wonderfully produced and it just when you look at that poster man i mean some people are gonna say i'm overreacting but that poster gives me the most boring school vibes possible and every episode it almost acts like it's a different style of school anime but it just handles it so like elegantly it's almost like there's a level of confidence to this show that you just don't always see in these types of series. And sometimes you do get sideswept by a show such as The Dangers of My Heart or a show like this, where it's just like, okay, at face value, you think, eh, you know, it's just going to be another, oh, wait, no, this is something special. I already want to see a season two. I think 12 episodes isn't going to be nearly enough to scratch the itch that a show like this is delivering me. And uh, if they need to keep it, I'm okay if they want to make the Blu-ray box art this girl's feet from episode one. Do whatever you gotta do to make that moolah because this show deserves multiple episodes. Though I do secretly hope there's at least one anime fan. I'm gonna imagine it's a small handful that are still baited by episode one. They're they're thinking they're signing up for the foot fetish anime. They're they're like, oh here we go, we finally got that feet anime. And then they never see feet again, and it's fantastic. I was told last week, and I just want to bring this quickly up. Uh, if we remember the final outfit that was shown uh, during the whole uh, changing montage, turns out in the source material, that initial last outfit is a lot more spicy. So the anime toned it down, which does explain, because their reaction to the last outfit was like, that's such a tame outfit. Like, it was vanilla. Like, there was worse outfits prior to that. So it turns out the anime actually downplayed it. So, yeah, you want to see what it actually looked like, check out the source material. Uh, but great episode. I would say right now for me, episode 2, followed by 3, followed by 1 is the order of best to worst. And I'm not saying episode 1 was bad. If episode 1 was bad, I wouldn't have continued watching it. But that's how I'm ranking it. So I think we're at a pretty good stage with this show and uh, quite the bombshell to drop by episode 3. But I appreciate that they didn't beat around the bush, drag it out, make us go nine episodes and, you know, then sneak it in or something. Makes a lot more sense to do it like this, but goddamn. But those are my feelings, of course. Let me know what you're thinking of uh, the twist, the different type of formula that they're rolling with, because this show isn't playing by the traditional school rules, so let me know what you're feeling down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, we have those full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today we got Jesse Wright, Mick Pie, Simulcrum, Joe Gaming Axe, Troy, and Rika Matsu. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and y'all have a good one.